the lovely old carols played and replayed till their effect is like a dentist's drill or a jackhammer, the pathetic banalities of the pulpit and the chilling commercialism of almost everything else, people spending money they can't afford and presents you neither need nor want, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, the plastic tree, the cornball crash, the hallmark virgin. Yet, for all our efforts, we've never quite managed to ruin it. That in itself is part of the miracle, a part you can see, most of the miracle you can't see, or don't. Christmas itself is by grace. It could never have survived our own blindness and depredations otherwise. It could never have happened otherwise. Perhaps it's the very wildness and strangeness of the grace that has led us to try to tame it. We've tried to make it habitable. We have roofed it in and furnished it. We've reduced it to an occasion we feel at home with, at best a touching and beautiful occasion, at worst a trite and cloying one. But if the Christmas event in itself is indeed, as a matter of cold, hard fact, all it's cracked up to be, then even at best our efforts are misleading. The word became flesh, ultimate mystery born with a skull you would crush one-handed, incarnation. It is not tame, it is not touching, it is not beautiful, it is uninhabitable terror, it is unthinkable darkness riven with unbearable light, agonized laboring led to it, vast upheavals of intergalactic space, time split apart, a wrenching and tearing of the very sinews of reality itself. You can only cover your eyes and shudder before it, before this, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, who for us and for our salvation, as the Nicene Creed puts it, came down from heaven. Came down. Only then do we dare uncover our eyes and see what we can see. It is the resurrection and the life she holds in her arms. It is the bitterness of death he takes at her breast. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and your neighbors yourself. And these two hang all the law, says Jesus. And how can to love God, it seems to me, whatever that means, is not unlike loving anything. To love is to look for, to wait for, to watch for, to listen for. You love God, you wait for him, you watch for him, you listen for him. You smell the scent of him. And we're so busy doing other things, I am so busy doing other things, that I forget to do that. Except once in a while, always by grace, I think, rather than by taking pains, it happens. And the time that's most vivid to me when it happened I was one Christmas Eve in Vermont when my children were still little and my brother and his wife were there and he and his wife and my wife and I did all the things you do with children on Christmas Eve. We helped them hang their stockings. We left a little cup of cider and cookie for Santa Claus and uh, when they went to bed, we lugged all the presents down from the attic and stuck them under the tree and were just about to fall exhausted into bed when I realized that our neighbor down the hill, not very far, had gone off for Christmas and had said before he left, will you feed my sheep for me? He had a dozen sheep or more. It was snowing quite heavily, but I said that I would do it, so my brother and I put on our boots and we, we uh, slogged down the hill in the dark with the snow up to our knees and... Uh, went into the hay barn and got a couple of bales each and carried them into the shed where the hay, where the sheep were and uh, broke the strings and shook the hay dust out of it and put them in the manger. The 40 watt bulb we turned on and the sheep came bumbling up to the manger, their sort of foolish, holy faces. And the snow was coming down and the smell of the hay and it was Christmas Eve. And I suddenly realized where I was but only by luck. I might so easily not have known where I was. That the world is a manger. The world is a manger in which God is continually being born in one form or another. But we're so apt to be lost in thought, 
looking somewhere else. I love God, pay attention, watch, listen, wait for, and love each other, Jesus says. Love your neighbor, 